Hi, welcome back to the Pinball Mike D Creature Hologram Mod installation video series. This is the third and final installment, and in this video we'll discuss how to put the TV inside the cabinet. So with uh, that said, let's get started. Alright, so now that all the hard stuff's done, I can get the TV attached to its stand and get that mounted inside the cabinet. Uh, so for starters, I want to get my workspace prepped, so I'm going to lay a nice soft towel down on top of a table, and I'm doing this so that when I flip the TV over, laying the screen face down, that I'll have something to help protect it from getting scratched while I'm working on it. Alright, so at this point I can go ahead and flip the TV over, and the first thing we're going to notice is there is a black plastic part uh, attached to the TV at its base. Obviously, for our installation purposes, we're not going to use that. So I can take a Phillips head screwdriver and remove the four bolts that hold that plastic part to the TV. And I can take those bolts along with that plastic doohickey and I can go ahead and chuck those in the trash because we're not using them. Now, if I go into the TV box, there should be a remote control in there. And inside the packaging with the remote control, we'll find four smaller Phillips head bolts. Those bolts are what we're going to use to actually attach the TV stand to the TV. So now we need to position the TV as shown in this picture with all of the uh, control buttons on the left side of the TV. And then I can take the TV stand and lay it face down on the back of the TV. The four holes in the face of the mounting stand should perfectly align with the four bolt holes on the back of the TV. So now I can take the bolts that we just pulled out of the remote control packaging and I can start threading those into the back of the TV by hand. And once I have the stand positioned the way I want, I'll take the short handle Phillips head screwdriver and I'll go ahead and tighten all four of those bolts down. Alright, so that takes care of mounting the TV to its stand. So, just to review, the TV should be positioned exactly as shown in this picture. The insignia text should be on the same side of the stand where the three mounting holes are located in the base plate. Otherwise, it means the TV is probably 180 degrees out, and that means that all the videos are going to be displayed upside down, and of course we don't want that. So at this point, uh, we can set the stand aside, and there's a couple things we need to address inside the cabinet before moving forward. Okay, so I'm going to raise the play field, and I want to locate two harness hooks and their associated metal standoff posts. And the reason we're looking for these two items is because we're going to remove them from the bottom of the play field. And I'm doing that so that when I lower the play field, those metal standoffs don't hit the TV screen by accident. Obviously, we, we don't want that to happen. Okay, so the first standoff post that we're going to remove is the one shown here. And that's located about 5 inches to the right of the snack bar scoop and about 7 inches up from there. So I'm going to take my quarter inch nut driver and remove the number six screws holding the standoff post to the play field. And then once that standoff post is free, I'm going to take two of the larger wire ties provided with the mod, wrapping one around the harness on each side of that wire hook. And then once those wire ties are snug and secure, I can unhook that standoff from the harness. And of course, I'm going to take some blue painter's tape and cover up the holes in the bottom of the playfield where the standoff was mounted. Okay, so the second standoff post that we're going to remove is the one located just above the chase lamp board as shown here. So again, I'm going to use a quarter inch nut driver to disconnect the stand from the playfield. And then I'm going to use two of the larger wire ties provided with the mod, placing one on each side of the standoff post. And then once those wire ties are snug and secure, I can remove the wire hook and its associated standoff from the harness. So at this point, I just need to take some blue painter's tape and cover up the holes in the bottom of the playfield where the standoff post was mounted. 
All right, so before we put the TV inside the cabinet, let's take a closer look at the mounting stand itself. So as you can see, the base plate has three holes in it. And what this does is it provides us with two mounting options for the TV stand. Option one, as shown here, utilizes the two outermost holes to position the TV as close to the front of the cabinet as possible. This provides the ideal viewing situation for folks that like to play right up on the pinball machine. Option two, as shown here, utilizes the middle mounting hole and what this effectively does is it allows us to move the TV a half inch towards the rear of the cabinet. So this provides the optimum viewing position for people that like to play a little further off of the pinball machine. Now it really you know, is all a matter of preference. So it's kind of a trial and error thing that you know, everybody's going to have to do independently to determine you know, what works best for them. All right, so with that said, it's time for a quick disclaimer. Now, when we designed the TV stand, it was designed in such a way that the TV's not going to flip over. Uh, the, the purpose of having the mounting holes and the base plate on the stand are simply to keep the stand from sliding around during gameplay when the machine is tilted. So, we strongly recommend that when transporting the pinball machine, the TV and its associated mounting stand are removed from inside the cabinet. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and plug the HDMI cable into the TV, and we also want to plug the modified 12 volt DC power cable into the TV as well. It's just easier to do this with the TV out of the cabinet as opposed to trying to do it once the TV is inside the cabinet. All right, so now we can finally take the TV and its stand and place those inside the cabinet. Now, of course, we don't want any cabling to get stuck underneath the base plate on the stand because we need the stand to be flush with the cabinet floor before we proceed with mounting it. So once we have the stand positioned where we want it, we can go ahead and slide it and get it in place, aligning the holes in the base plate with the two T-nuts in the bottom of the cabinet. Again, those were the T-nuts that were used to mount the mirror motor assembly. So that is what we're going to use to mount the stand to the cabinet floor. So the MON is provided with two 832 bolts and washers that can be used for these specific T-nut locations. So obviously this is somewhat of a tight fit once we have the stand and the TV on top of it. So I found the easiest way to access these bolts is to use a short handled Phillips head screwdriver and try to reach around from the back side of the TV uh, coming at it from the side of the cabinet where the transformer is located. So yes, it's a, it's a tight fit, but it does work. All right, so before we get too carried away with cranking down on these bolts, we need to do a quick alignment check on the TV's position inside the cabinet. So I'm going to take a tape measure and I'm going to measure from the left sidewall of the cabinet to the outer edge of the TV. And I should have roughly three and a half inches. Now it's absolutely critical that you have three and a half inches, that same distance at the top and the bottom of the TV. Otherwise the TV is crooked and when you start playing the game, all of the graphics are going to look crooked. The other thing that's important is that the TV does not exceed that three and a half inches from the left sidewall. And the reason that that's important is because the ball up kicker at the M film letter shot is very close to the TV. So if the TV is shifted too far to the right inside the cabinet, that uh, coil assembly is going to hit the TV when the play field is lowered. Okay, so now that we've got the TV aligned correctly, we can go ahead and tighten the bolts down, mounting the stand to the cabinet floor. So now that we've got the TV mounted, we can go ahead and plug the HDMI cable into the Raspberry. And of course, uh, <laughs> the system isn't going to work very well unless we install the SD card. 
So this is probably a good time to plug that in as well. All right, so now I need to go to the Coindoor interface board and locate the connector that has landed on J2. So we'll remove that IDC connector from the board. We'll take the Molex connector labeled JC2 on our power harness and we'll plug it in where we just removed that IDC connector. Now I'll take that IDC connector and I'll plug it into the Z connector on JC1. So that effectively gives us 12 volt DC power at the two pin connector labeled MON, which stands for monitor. So now all I've got to do is take the modified TV cable that should already be plugged into the TV and route that through the wire clips along the left side of the cabinet and plug it in to the two pin connector labeled monitor and voila we now have 12 volt DC power to the TV. Alright so we've made it to the final step in the installation process and this one's pretty simple we just need to make sure we set the TV up so that when we power the pinball machine on the TV powers up at the same time. So in order to do that we need to turn the game on and then we need to take our remote control for the TV and press the power button. Once the TV is powered up, we need to press the HDMI button on the remote control to select the HDMI port. So now when we turn the machine off and turn it back on, the TV will automatically turn on when the game is powered up and it will start scanning the HDMI port where the Raspberry is plugged in. Okay, so I want to point out one last thing and that is the fact that our mod essentially uses a computer to play all of the various video files throughout the course of gameplay. And of course, like any computer, when you turn it off and turn it back on, there's some time associated with booting up the operating system. So for the Raspberry, it typically takes anywhere from 30 to 40 seconds for the operating system to come up and start running our program. So don't be alarmed when you power the mod up the first time and you see a black screen for you know a half a minute or so. That is normal. All right, so that wraps up the entire installation. I hope you guys have found these videos informative and I really hope you enjoy the mod once you get it installed in your game. We uh, spent a long time over the last year working on this. So we're very proud of what we've been able to produce here and we really think you guys are going to love it. So until the next mod, take it easy and uh, enjoy.